Hey everybody, Sean from BoardParacord.com here with you and I'm going to show you a new design that I came up with yesterday and thanks to Ken we're going to call this the hanging bat or not the hanging basket, the hanging bridge um, kind of resembles a bridge this is what we're going to be doing this section right here um, yeah it does look like a hanging bridge a little bit so we're going to call it that alright so got a gray buckle um, it matches the colors I'm going to use. I got about 10 feet of silver gray color here. And then I also have 4 feet of the uh, electric blue. What I've already done, um, I've already done the cow's hitch on this end to attach the cord to the buckle. So what we're going to do is just run this through the bottom of the buckle and come up through the top. with these smaller buckles it definitely helps to flatten out your buckle or flatten out the cord just heat it up and then use a pair of pliers I uh, got a couple, couple sitting here these pliers don't have any teeth so it leaves the paracord nice and smooth alright anyways um, basic shape of the, the bracelet here hold on I'm going to adjust my camera down just a little bit here there we go that should be better all right, now let's open this up. Now you want to make this a little bit longer, and I don't know how much longer, because what you, what you have to do is, if you look at the example here, the the red and the yellow is actually going to be the blue color here, and those are on the outside. So when you open this up, it's going to pull your buckles closer to each other. I don't know how far, probably a half inch to an inch when you do this. All right, so get that out of the way real quick. Back up just a little. All right, so you're gonna have your setup just like this. Your your paracord is gonna come through the buckle this way, right cord, left cord. Now, to get these tied, what I want to do is I want to have the these cords out on the outside part of the bracelet. And to do that, what you can do is figure out your length and then pinch it right at the buckle create a loop on the right with your right cord come up through the center and then loop it back down through that loop and this will allow you to lock this cord right onto the buckle like that okay do the same thing on this side so you're going to create a loop on the left and then go down through that loop when you're coming up through the center so loop come up through the center and go down through that loop and then you want to just double check your measurement just to be sure alright so now these are going to be okay so these ends here they're just going to be down here. You're not going to do anything with them. They're just going to be kind of hanging there um, until we get down to the end. Now, your main color, which is the black color on here, that's going to be your longest strand. And here I've got about 10 feet. Not really sure how much I'm going to need, but because it's the majority of the bracelet, there's going to be quite a bit needed. I'm just going to take this down through the, the buckle right here. If I can, I might have to use a pair of pliers to grab hold of it. Here we go. And I'm just going to pull about two to three inches out of the back over here. So from this point here, what we want to do is the first pass, we're going to just cover one of these center strands, and then on the second pass, we're going to cover both of them. So what we're going to do here is basically we're gonna go create a loop here with your finger and pinch it so now you have a loop here you're gonna take that cord down through the bottom and I got a lot of cord here so it may take a second to pull everything through and then we're gonna wrap around this cord here and then we're gonna go through that loop
Now this first one looks a little different than what it will look like. Okay, so just to recap what you did is you went down through the center, came around this center, center cord, and then crossed underneath of that first loop that you made. Now this one, what we do, we're going to kind of do the same thing, but instead of going, well, let me just show you. We're going to basically create another loop like you just did with your finger, and you're going to do the same thing. Now that first step is a little different than what the rest of them will be because it's just where we started, just happened to be where we started. So you're going to create that loop with your finger, go around these two, so you're going underneath the two of them now, and then you're going to cross through that loop off to the left side. And this should... Yep, and that's what we're looking for. Now this first one, like I said, it looks a little funny. And if you get a little slack right here in this first this first part right here, just reach through where you started and pull that slack up. Alright, and then you're going to pull this nice and tight. There we go. Alright, and then we're off to the other side. So, you're going to create a loop. And the first, okay, so after the first step here, you're going to... Um, kind of do it a little differently now. So you're going to go over top of this first cord. So you're taking your, your working end over the first cord and then you're going to come up through this this little area right here. So all you're doing is looping around that first cord. Pull it kind of snug, and it's going to come up towards you. This this cord's coming up towards you. Now create a loop like you did before with your finger. Take your cord behind the two cord, the two center strands, and go off to the left side. And then that's going to wrap over top of those two cords and pull all your excess through. So what you're really looking for is this bridge right here is going to cover these two strands. And then just work out your slack. There we go. That, that should look good. Now what you're looking for is these two bridges here. Those should be touching. And that's what's going to kind of fill in this gap for you. Kind of keep it nice and even. Alright, so create a loop. You're going over the first strand and down through the center of these two strands. And then come up through that loop. Alright, and then kind of pull that a little tight. And then you're going to create a, create a bridge here. Go down through the center. Cross behind the two strands on the right. Loop it around, go over top, and then up through that loop there. So let me just zoom in on this so you can see what I just did there. So you're going, you're creating a loop here, going underneath around and then go through that loop that you created. All right, let me pull this through. Now this one does take a little bit of time, but it turns out pretty good. I really like the results of this. And you just keep on pulling it until until you can't really pull any harder. So you're grabbing here and here and just kind of pulling. And you'll see the slack take out. And you might get a little bunch up right here, this little blue section. So you just pull that down and then it'll come out. Alright, I'm going to do one more on the left side here. And you'll start to see the design come together here too. Um, one thing you want to do also 
is as you get going, if there's too much of a gap, then you can grab hold of your these blue cords here and just push everything up. Just kind of close that gap up a little bit. Okay, so create a loop. That's your first step. First step, create a loop on the top. Just like that, up here. Take your cord down through the center. Sorry about that. And then you're going to cross it underneath of this first cord here. And then come up through this where your finger is at. Go through that loop. Just pull everything through there. Now I would imagine this one would be a lot easier on a jig. That way you could... Oops, I messed that up. Yep, I went the wrong way. I went under when I should have went over. Um, I would imagine on a jig this would be a little easier because you could... I don't know, you could keep your uh, length better. And you could we can use both hands a little easier. Okay, so I should have went over and I went under. Alright, so all I did really is looped looped around this first strand. Okay, and then we're going to create our bridge. Go underneath both strands now. And then take your cord through the bridge and pull everything tight. Real nice and easy. And we'll pull everything tight. Okay, one more quick one, just to be sure that you got it. So you're going over, over top, under, coming up through. Pull a little snug. Create that bridge, go under, and then through the loop. You're doing the same steps on both sides, you're just kind of mirroring, mirroring the, uh, the other side. That pulled tight. There we go. Alright, well that's it right there. I'm going to finish this on up. It's going to take me a little bit because it's just, you know, it's one of those ones that take a little longer. And I'll be back to show you how to finish it. Alright, so I got down to the bottom here and I think I just have enough room to do one more pass. But I can't go any further without using a fid. So I'm just going to thread this fid onto this paracord here. And we'll use the fid now. Alright, so let me pull this tight. Last pass there. And we're going to go down through the center. I'm sorry, no we're not. We're going to come up through the back. To create that loop around the first one. There we go. I'll try and stay in frame for you. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to create that big loop, the bridge. Don't want to pull it all the way through here. There we go, create your bridge. And then you're just going to go through that bridge. Pull this tight. You know, I might be able to get one more if I really kind of push it through there. I think I'm going to do one more here. Make sure we're nice and good looking here. Alright, so we're going to come up through the back, right through the middle. Whoops. I only want to go through... You want to go down through here. Because we're only, we're only going over the first one. through the center again. There's no way I'd be able to do this part without a fid. Or at least a pair of those pliers I showed you earlier. Pull that back a little for our bridge. And then go through the bridge. Alright, so that's going to be our last one. It's getting pretty tight. Yep, that's going to be it. So, what I need to do... Oops. 
Uh, see how I didn't include that in there? I need to include that in there. So I have to use my fid to uh, untighten this a little bit. There we go. Pull this out. And we're just going to push this down through the loop so that it's inside of there. And then we can tighten it. Okay. So now what we need to do is we're going to cut our end of blue here and here. And we're just going to cut the silver here. But before that, I'm just going to unscrew this real quick. But before all that, what I want to do is I want to back this out of here, out of the buckle. I just put it inside the buckle, just kind of hold it for a second. And then I want to put it down through the center because there's a nice hole there. Push it through there. And then we can cut this and melt it right in place. Oops. Cut this. I just want this to get really melty so that I can stick it down in there pretty good. Yeah, that'll work. Real nice and smooth. Oh, it doesn't look the best, but it's nice and smooth, that's for sure. Alright, so that'll finish that end. Now we just cut these sections here. And I think what I want to do first is pull the silver nice and tight and do this silver portion first. You kind of want to isolate it so that you don't burn the surrounding paracord. This one's going to be kind of hard to, to get. There we go, that should work. Smash that in there. Now I would suggest um, using a regular lighter on that part. Alright, now we got our blue sections here. cut off a little more than that. Otherwise we're going to have, I'm, I'm just off camera cutting this real quick. I don't want all this fiber to get all, all over my, my, uh, my backdrop there. Just give me one second, sorry about this. Should work for that. Press that in there. Good. All right. Come to the other side. Make sure you cut it close to wherever it's coming out of. That way you don't have a ton of ton to melt down. There we go. All right. And there it is. That is. What I'm going to call the hanging bridge does resemble a hanging bridge. The back side looks really cool too. So if you've got some flat buckles, use a flat buckle because this back side is pretty sweet. Uh, anyways, um, I was going to measure this, but I don't know where my tape measure went. Um, out of that 10 feet, I've got about 2 feet, maybe 2.5 feet left of the silver. Um, so it looks like 10 feet's a little more than you need. But all in all, this turned out good. Thanks again to Ken for the name. And until next time, oh, don't forget, check out facebook.com slash groups slash paracord on. That's where you can post all your videos. You can post your pictures, share what you're doing. Uh, a lot of people share what kind of sales they're doing uh, as far as like going to churches or flea markets. So check that out. Um, just search for paracord on, you'll find it. And uh, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, paracord on.